Hey everybody, I'm Stormsteel, and in this video, we're going to talk about a few different methods for placing large quantities of airfoils so you can get the most out of your ship build. Before we get started, just a friendly reminder that I stream Dual Universe several times a week over on Twitch, link to that is in the description below. Head over to my Twitch channel to see my current streaming schedule and give me a follow so you're alerted when I go live next. So here we are at the Stormsteel Industries hangar in the Alioth Desert. Now's a good time to mention, if you haven't already, make sure to check out my Airfoils 101 video to familiarize yourself with the different kinds of airfoils and their pros and cons. Link to that will be in the description below. Assuming you've already watched that or you are just already a pro on airfoil stats, we'll go ahead and get started. So the first method I want to bring to you today is pretty commonly known. Um, I just call it the stack. So I have kind of an example of that here on the build I'm currently working on, the uh, Raikou Mark II. I'll just go ahead and delete this Lumi glass that's making it look um, really pretty there and kind of hiding it, making it look more like a vent. Delete all that and you'll see what it really is here is just a stack of wings. I've slightly offset them to make them look a little prettier, but you can absolutely just 100% vertically stack them. This is a very quick and easy way to place wings and get a lot of lift out of it. Obviously, you, you want to try and cover that up aesthetically somehow, otherwise it just looks really gaudy. However, in order to really build a hauler in this game the way it currently works, you kind of just need large quantities of wings to create that lift, right? So I can show you here on the wall of ailerons um, a, a bit of a simpler way to place those that some people don't know about. I actually just recently learned. I'll go ahead and not wing variant. Let's grab wings here. If I'm using arrow keys to move uh, a wing around, an element around to place it, I can hit enter and you see I didn't get moved anywhere. I can then just use arrow keys again to, to move another placement of that element. And I can just keep doing that and end up with a perfectly aligned vertical wing every time I hit enter. You can also, if you were doing that like zigzag stack that I was doing before, you could hit arrow keys over and the same thing would still happen there. Right? So, so the stack, this very clean, simple stack is a very quick and easy way to place a large quantity of airfoils. Now with the stack in mind, let's move on to method two, which I just call the alternating stack or the crisscross stack. You'll see this really commonly in a lot of small core haulers. You'll see here, I've placed these wings so that they're actually facing opposite directions. Now, the only real con to this is that it just takes a little bit more careful placement. You can't simply you know, hit enter, arrow key up, enter, arrow key up. That's a very easy way to place it. This, although it takes a little bit more effort to place, is slightly more space efficient. You can see here because of the wide base and thinner tip of the wings, you actually get to cross the wings about half a voxel over into each other's space there. So you actually end up fitting more wings in the same amount of space when you use this method. It can look a little weird if it's not used right. So what you'll see a lot is people build these sort of boxes like I've built here and kind of have them off on the sides of the ship to look sort of like engine boxes um, that you would see in sort of a, a sci-fi ship, a uh, atmospheric ship of some sort, right? So it, it's pretty easy to make it look pretty good using that. And then a lot of times what they'll do with those boxes, little bonus here, is they'll create a stack of wings or an alternating stack on the side and then use voxels to make it look kind of like a support strut of some sort that actually attaches it to the main body of the ship. So you kind of double your money on the space that you're utilizing for airfoils when you do this. This really only works with wings. You could use ailerons if you were willing to have a bigger box or a longer strut. Um, stabilizers are, it's, are not space efficient enough to really utilize this. And in my opinion, you don't really want to use them horizontally anyway. So I would stick to wings for this particular method. On to our third method today. This is what I just call the ridge. And as you can see, it's just a horizontally placed row of wings, very similar to the stack, but we've angled them so that they can be placed uh, along a line with each other. Now, this is probably the most difficult of the methods so far to get the placement of, because as you change the angle of the wing, uh, that changes the distance that you can put them apart. Now, obviously you want the shallowest angle possible because the more you angle the wing, the less vertical lift you're actually getting out of it, it's redirecting that lift into a different direction as you angle it, same as engines. So we wanted as flat as possible, but that also reduces uh, how many wings we get to put in, in place because they take up more space. 
Now, what you see here is I've just sort of placed a row of, of honeycomb that I then place a wing against. And once again, just like that little trick we learned earlier, um, you can get your wing in place. I might not be able to because I've got other elements here. Here we go. Get the wing in the place you want. You can hit enter and just scoot it on over to help maintain the angle. This will help you keep the same angle across the board, right? Uh, I would do it by hand a few or at a few different angles so that you can actually uh, make sure that it's um, spaced the way that you want and that they're not obstructing each other. When you build with this method, your wings will pass in and out of obstruction. See, I've got varying degrees of, of red on some of these wings, but I kind of just ignore it. You know, you wait a few moments or you place something else somewhere else and, and chances are the obstruction will go away. If it doesn't, then you need to reassess the angle you're placing at. Here you can see I've only done one long row because I put some um, retro breaks here, but you could absolutely double it up. You see, you've got the placement for the wing already lined up for you. You just have to place that second row if you've got the space. So that was on the bottom with the angles uh, of the wing slightly down on my Raikou. On my Helios, I did the opposite. I've got them on the top with the angle slightly up. So there's a couple different ways of doing that. Um, you could theoretically also do this on the sides for, for vertically placed wings to help your, your steering, to help catch as you turn sharply. So that is also an option. You could do a double or single, up to you. It just completely depends on the space you have. Now, once again, um, you, you probably want to decorate it in some form. It has to be open enough that you're still able to repair uh, the wings should they get damaged. But I just sort of placed a little honeycomb shield here. I might do some stuff on the bottom but there has to be enough left out. In my opinion, you can also make this look kind of cool. It can create a really neat ridge effect if you're going for a more um, intricate ship or something more alien looking. That ridge of wings that's created, if you leave it exposed in the right way, can create a really neat visual effect as well. For our fourth and final airfoil placing method for today's video, uh, let's talk about the, I guess, engine aileron, you could call it. Um, it's been realized that uh, the width of one large atmospheric engine is uh, half the width of a medium aileron or the full width of a compact medium aileron. And so if you're stacking atmospheric engines in, in any capacity, you can place uh, an aileron, say I've got a compact one here, since you're allowed to place it by the, the flat side, you can place those against an engine and then begin moving them around with arrow keys to achieve um, this, this forward facing, or I guess back facing uh, aileron on your engines. And just like the wing placements, you can see some of the engines are claiming to be obstructed while others aren't. These will fade out. Like just before I hit record, this was bright red. And so just like with weird aileron placements, see there it goes, uh, it'll, it'll go in and out of saying it's obstructed. So it's probably not right. Um, you could also, if you if you only have a single vertical stack, you can place a compact aileron and it will fit in perfectly. And so it's just a nice way to make efficient use of the space there if you can aesthetically make it look pleasing as well. When you place a lot of ailerons together in sort of a box formation or in rows, it tends to have a pretty cool look to it. So you don't have to worry too much about uh, the aesthetics of placing something like that. Once again, just a really good efficient use of space to squeeze a little extra lift out of your ship. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope this was helpful. As always, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel so you can keep being alerted when I drop guides like this one. And again, please make sure to head over to my Twitch channel, follow me there so we can hang out while we play the game, or if you have any questions, I'd be happy to help you there. And please, 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 please do not be afraid to make requests on what guides you would like me to make next. I am always happy to help you guys out. So hopefully I'll see you in the comments below or over on my Twitch channel. Until then, as always, stay safe out there.